hands, let's just begin our time with a word of prayer, all right? So God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for all that you've done. Lord, we just thanking you for your blessings. Lord, thank you for your protection, for your peace. God, we invite you into the space, into our living rooms, into our homes, into our cars, at work, wherever we're listening to, walking around the lake, God, we want to invite you into this place. Lord, will you open our eyes, our ears, our hearts to understand what you want to speak to us today? We thank you for our community. We thank you for our neighborhoods. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. All right. Well, saints, it's Valentine's Day. Well, yes, praise the Lord. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, some people, it means a lot to them. Some people, it means nothing at all. But it's the day where we uh, celebrate the capitalistic expression of love. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not going to do y'all like that. Some people, y'all like Valentine's Day. That's, that's all good. That's all good. Um, let's see. Today is the day of love. How should I describe love? How, do, how, how does one describe love? I don't know. Um, love, there's so many things I want to tell you. Um, but I'm afraid I don't know how because there's a possibility that you would look at me differently, love. From the first moment that I spoke your name, from then on, I knew that by you being in my life, things were destined to change. Nah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Prophet Evangelist Music Soul Child, for that uh, word of encouragement on love. But today, we're going to put a little twist on it. Don't tune off because I talked about, we're talking about love. Today, we're talking about love and liberation. Come on, can you say that? Love and liberation. We're going to start with our passage for today. It's coming from Galatians, Galatians 5, verse 1, and then 13 through 15. I'm reading from the NIV version, and it reads, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, for you will be destroyed by one another. May God bless God's holy word. I want to open our time with an African-American folktale. You might have heard this before, but it's called The People Could Fly. It reads like this. They say the people could fly. Say that long ago in Africa, some of the people knew magic and that they could walk up on the air like climbing on a gate. And they flew like blackbirds over the fields. Then, many of the people were captured for slavery. The ones that could fly shed their wings. They couldn't take their wings across the water or on the slave ships. Too crowded, don't you know? The folks were full of misery. Then, got sick with the up and downs of the sea. So they forgot about flying when they could no longer breathe the sweet scent of Africa. Say the people who could fly kept their power, although they shed their wings. They worked along the side the other folk in the field. All the workers heard the sting of the, over, of, of the overseer's words. They all felt the snarl of the whip, the driver's whip around their legs. They all felt their clothes being torn to rags and their legs bleeding onto the earth. Then one day, one of the slaves started talking about the time has come. He raised his arms out to the others and sighed in the ancient words that were a dark promise. There was a great outcrying. The bent back straightened up. Old and young who were called slaves and could fly joined hands. They rose in the air. They flew in the flock as was black against the heavenly blue. 
black crows or black shadows, it didn't matter. They went so high, way above the plantation, way over the slavery land, they said they flew away into freedom, into freedom. Isn't that a beautiful story? Oh my gosh, this story just drips with the ideas of liberation. I mean, the yearning for freedom is just so beautiful. I wish it was true, this story. This just beautiful imagery of black folk just flying away from oppression. What a, can you imagine how they felt in the air flying away from the slave masters? And this imagery was written so many times in old church songs. Y'all might remember these songs that would go, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away in the morning. Y'all remember that? Or I got wings, you got wings, all God's children got wings. When we get to heaven, gonna put on the wings, gonna fly all over God's heaven. And what about this? Uh, two wings to veil my face. Two wings to veil my feet. Two wings to fly away to glory. And the world can't do me no harm. Y'all remember that? that might, I might have went too far back. I know y'all like contemporary worship. That was the old saints. That's what they would say. This imagery of flying away into freedom. Free people. Can you imagine that? Imagine freedom. What it would be like for our people to live in freedom. Now, I want you to know that the best feeling in the world, to me, the best feeling in the world is to be around people who give you the freedom to be yourself. Since we're talking about freedom, I just think that's the best feeling in the world. When you are able to be in a place where you can operate and be free to operate in your own personality. Have you ever been in a place like that where you are just free to be you, I think that is the best feeling of the world, in the world, freedom. Now let me define freedom. Not freedom to act a fool, that's not what I'm talking about. Not freedom to be disloyal or abusive. Just gotta make that real clear. I'm talking about freedom, I'm talking about liberation. I'm talking about what it means when you are able to show up as yourself. You could just show up as yourself. Like you love people with their personalities, their, their quirks, their idiosyncrasies, their loudness, their quietness. People that are just free. Have you ever been in a place where you're just free and people can fly around you as they were and not be squashed or shushed or, or managed or tamed or controlled? How it feels to be free not trying to make the introverts talk and make the extroverts be quiet. You know, giving people the freedom to spread their wings and express their humanness. I think that is the best feeling in the world, just like the slaves that were up and flying away, free to be themselves, free to be their God-given person walking in the image of God. Well, I have a news flash for you. Everybody might not share your same convictions or the way you do things or the way you eat or who you love or your perspective. We have to be in a place where we respect different people's way of seeing or different people's way of being. I'm thinking this feeling of freedom is probably the best gift that you could ever give someone. Just the freedom to be. Can you say that way? Just the freedom to be. Doesn't that just sound like heaven? The freedom to be. Now, on this, valen this Valentine's Day, I understand it is a, a day of love, but no matter what current relationship 
status you have, no matter if you are married or single or partnered or in a situationship or maybe it's complicated or maybe you have roommates or a family or siblings or co-working. It doesn't, whoever you're in a human relationship with, I believe that deep down inside, everyone desires the gift of being. Just free to be. Can you say that? Free to be. So what does this concept of love and liberation, how do they even work together? Love and liberation. Usually we don't put these two things together because once you're in love, you automatically put something, you like, you, you describe your relationship as, man, I got them on lock. Or I got him on lock. I got her on lock. Those are the, the imagery. It's cuffing season. We, 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 we cuffing, we, we locking down, or some people would do the old ball and chain. What is this imagery? Usually when we talk about love, we don't always equate it with liberation. So how can we love with liberation? How can we reclaim our love for one another? How can we reclaim liberation? I love to talk about liberation. We just did a, a sermon not too long ago about Jesus, the liberator. I believe this is a, a good thing for us to keep harping on because this is the purposes and plan God has for us. Can I get an amen? All right, well, let's read Galatians 5 and 1 because this is the premise for our whole talk. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. What a powerful word. You know, this church that Paul was writing to, the church in Galatia, had to learn how to accept these new believers, these Gentiles, and they had to accept them just as they were. They had to just let them be. They had the Gentiles who were coming in, and they're letting them know, like, you don't necessarily have to be circumcised, or you don't necessarily have to follow the Jewish law to be saved. It was a new concept for them. The Jews were really struggling how to love these Galatian Gentiles and just let them be, right? So this scripture, I, um, Galatians 5.1, tells us that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. This brings us to our first point. I only have two, so you better catch them. Our first point is let people operate in their purpose. What is the purpose? What is the purpose for human beings? What is our purpose? Have you ever wondered what your purpose is? Well, Galatians 5.1 just lets you know. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We are called to freedom. It's our purpose. So our job is to let people operate in their person. You know, freedom bothers some people. Some people feel that it is their job to keep you grounded, right? To keep you level-headed, to keep you, you know, make sure you don't get too high and mighty. These are the wing clippers. These are the people who don't want you to fly. They don't want you to be great. They don't want you to shine. You know, you got to stay humble. You got you to gotta be right down here with, with us. This is, everybody don't like freedom. Everybody doesn't want people to operate in their own giftings and to be their own person. You know, I struggle with this. I know, but it's just, y'all pray for me. Not, not you. I know y'all don't struggle with this, but it's me. I struggle with this in the past in different relationships that you want, instead of accepting a person's uniqueness, I would tend to develop a secret agenda in my mind to change them. I know that's not you. That's me. That's me. I'm, y'all pray for me. I would set up a secret agenda like, oh, I already know how I'm going to fix this. I already know I'm going to leave a few articles. I'm going to change this whole suit. I'm making people our projects. Our own DIY projects. That's what we do sometimes. We have the secret hidden agenda to change people. But what if we allow people just to be? 
<laughs> Galatians, we have this warning in Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. Check it out. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. What is your calling? My brothers and sisters, you are called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, for you will be destroyed by one another. Saints, listen to me. If we are not careful, if we are not watchful, if we are not vigilant, vigilant, we can start internalizing the ways of the oppressor. Everything that we stand against, we can become. This is why we have to be watchful. We have to be careful. This brings me to my second point. My second point is beware of horizontal oppression. Horizontal oppression, what is that? That's when people from targeted groups believe, act on, or enforce dominant systems of oppression against other members of targeted groups. Horizontal oppression. It's a thing, instead of us helping each other fly, we become the colonizers that we don't want to be in our relationships. We can actually become the colonizers. How do you know? How do you know? You might say, Pastor Anisha, how do I know if I'm operating under these principles of colonization or the notion of white supremacy? Notice I say the notion of white supremacy. I don't believe in white supremacy. I don't even think that that is a thing. It is a notion because white supremacy doesn't exist. If you are supreme, you don't have to do anything to show it or exert your power. You just are like a God is. God is just supreme. There's no other. That's a, I digress. That's a whole nother sermon. But I'm just saying, how will we know if you're operating under these principles? How do you know if you are um, becoming a colonizer in your own relationships? Well, there's one thing that you could look for. Be aware of operating under the charge of manifest destiny in relationships. That's right, I said manifest destiny. You know that you feel like it's your God-given right to come into somebody's life and change them. Like you know how they did when they went across the Americas and they felt like it was sovereign for them to go into different cultures and tell them how to live and dictate their lives. We can also un operate under the guise of manifest destiny into people's lives when we come in uninvited, and want to change them into an image that we feel is more suitable to us. Can I get an amen? Also, how would you know if you're operating under the principles of colonization? Perfectionism. Perfectionism is a, one of the vices. Like, everything needs to be perfect. I have a list. This person must check every list. I have a way that people must be around me. It must be perfect at all times, and you cannot fail. Perfection. That's a tool of colonization. Also, another tool is only one right way. There's only one right way, and usually that right way is my way. There's no compromise. This is the way it should be. If you want to be in a relationship with me or if you want to hang out or have a, you, we need to do it my way. Come on, check your list. And also, what's another principle of colonization? Power hoarding. One person having all the power in the relationship. The other person has no say. The other person has no stock in it. It all belongs to one person. I control all the power. I make all the moves. I do all the plans. It all comes through me. You could be exemplifying colonization in your relationship. Here's the last thing, either or thinking. It either is or it's not. It's black or it's white. It's wrong or it's right, it's yes or it's no. There's no in between, no room for openness, no uh, room for dialogue. It has to be yes or no. If you are operating under these systems, you might be operating under a colonizational framework. And I believe that this is why we have to have these conversations to remind ourselves that it is for freedom 
that God has set us free. Jesus came to set us free. And it is our job not to further perpetuate these systems, not to enslave. We don't want to be enslaved. We're not going to enslave anybody else. We have to be careful that we don't use these weapons of colonization against each other. So this is it's, it's Valentine's. We're going to give the gift of liberation. Can you tell somebody, I got something for you today. You're like, oh, I, got, I got you a gift, and I want to give you a box of liberation. Praise the Lord. Why don't you go ahead and give somebody, text somebody that's like, I got, you a, I got you a box of liberation. All right, here's our takeaways. I know I've said a lot, but I just got three takeaways that I want you to remember from this time together. The first takeaway is that we, we got to be mindful when we're in our relationships of unsolicited critiques. Let's be mindful of unsolicited critiques. You know, no one is perfect. We are all not perfect. I'm not perfect. We all have our flaws. We have shortcomings. We have blind spots. We have things that we always can't eat, see a, a clear perspective. And it's good to have a friend in your corner who could be like, hey, bro, like, or a sis, you know, maybe we should talk about. It's so good to have those people in our lives. But a lot of times these uh, positions in our lives are people who have earned the right to speak into these things. And so it's a good idea to ask permission before you um, call out things in love. All right, before we call out things in people's lives, let's ask permission. Hey, can I share with you some things I see? Can we do it in love and not as an attack? But like, I love this. So like, I think you could really be more efficient. If you, can, I, can I give you some points? That's the first thing. Be mindful of unsolicited critiques. Make sure it's welcomed. Number two, give people the freedom to accept your advice or not. I'm going to say it again. Give people the freedom to accept your advice or not. I know you have amazing ideas. I know that if people would just follow your program, everything would be okay, and they would be in a better situation. But we have to learn to love people where they are. We have to walk, along, walk alongside people during their process. Because guess what? You weren't always thinking the way you were thinking right now. It's sometimes when I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. I did some crazy, foolish things. But I had to go through a process to get to where I am in my thinking now. And a lot of times, we don't want to see people through a process. We just want them to go to A to B. And we want them to arrive where we've arrived through a lot of heartaches, through a lot of knuckleheadedness, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff we done done. That's why we are where we at. But let's walk alongside people in their process and not be hurt or not take it personal if people don't take your advice. A lot of times we're like, hey, well, I tried to tell them and they didn't listen, so oh, they better not call me. No, 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 no. We let's love people through their processes right where they are. Here's the last practical takeaway. Let's stay in our lane. Let me hear you say that. Stay in my lane. We have to realize that we cannot play God in anybody's lives. I'm not the Holy Spirit. You're not the Holy Spirit. We are not the Holy Spirit in anyone's life. We don't have the power to change anybody. We don't have the power to change anyway. That's God's business. There's difficult people that I've had in my life where I have to be like, Lord, this is your child. This is your person. You could talk to them better than I can. You could deal with them. You could send signs, wonders, visions. You can do it. I can't do it. I have the power to change no one. That's God's business. That's God's job to change people. You know what we can do? We could pray. Amen. We always be like, well, all I can do is pray. That's the best thing you can do is to pray for people. We can model the behavior that we wish to see, right? And if somebody is dysfunctional or abusive in your life, you can give them a gift too. You could give them the gift of boundaries. And you could also give them the gift of distance. Everybody gets a gift today. Everybody can give them, and, and you can give them boundaries and distance, and you can let God do God's work on them from a distance. Amen. So let God do his work wherever he's going to do it at. Amen. So as I close, I know y'all got things to do today. I know y'all got 
you know, as I close, I want you to think about who would appreciate the gift of freedom from you today? Who would appreciate it? Who would appreciate you saying, you know what, I'm not trying to change you. I just, I just want to love you. I'm just going to love you wherever you are. I, I'm, not going, I'm not here to change you. Who would appreciate hearing that from you? Because this is what God does for us. This is where we could grow up a praise. This is where we give a shout. Because this is exactly what God does for us. God gives us, God gives us the gift of being. Just the gift of being. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more or less. It, right now, there's absolutely nothing you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make God love you, love you less. Yes, you could do, let's do fast, let's do consecration. Yes, God wants us to mature in him, but that's for your benefit. If I had a car for my grandson who is like four months right now, it would be to his benefit for him to grow up and be mature so that he could use the car. That's for him. That don't have nothing to do with me. That's the same with God. The God, God wants to. God loves us so much that he doesn't want us to leave us the same way, but it's for our benefit. So there are things we can do to mature in our faith, but there is nothing you can do, nothing you to do to make God love you more or less. I want you to sit with that and give that gift to somebody else. God also gives us a gift of choice. Come on, hallelujah. God gives us a gift of choice. God still, think about this. God still provided a way of salvation through Jesus knowing that everybody would not choose him. I'll say it again. God made a way of salvation through Jesus, knowing that everybody won't choose Jesus, but he still provided a choice. Do you give people a choice in your life? Do you give them a choice to follow or not follow the, the Jesus, to follow after the ways of God or not follow after the ways of God? We have to give people a choice just like Jesus does to us. Here's the last thing that God does for us. God doesn't wait for us to clean up our act to show us God's love. The Bible says in Romans, but God demonstrated his own love for us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. God doesn't wait for us to be perfect. God doesn't wait for us to get our act together, nor should we treat our brothers and sisters the same way. There's some people who are in a process in your life right now. There's a people who are in the process. You don't know where God's going to take them. You don't know what God's going to do in their life. But God's calling you to love them right now where they are without condition. So as we close, I just want to admonish you to be liberatory in your relationships, whether they're romantic, whether they're uh, friendships, whether they're people in your family. Let's be liberatory in our relationships and let people fly. Let them be free. Let them be free to be themselves and be in their own personalities without us trying to colonize or control them. Uh, next week, we're going to do a part two. So I hope you're ready. Next week, we're going to talk about giving the gift of love and liberation to yourself. And we're going to talk about ways we can deal with internal oppression through the Word of God. So I hope that you will join us. As we close, I just have some questions for you to leave with and reflect with. If you're in a small group, this would be great to go over in a small group. The first question is, when was the last time you were able to show up in your full personality? And how did it feel? Number two, when was the last time you gave someone that gift to show up in their full personality as their full self? Number three, in what way can you be a safe place for people in your life? And the last one, number four, how can you improve on loving people where they are? And a lot of you can answer this question. Do you, do you love in a way where people don't have to change around you? I, like, I love this about Jesus. Wherever Jesus went, he would hang out with sinners and tax collectors and just be chilling with them. And he did, people felt comfortable to be around Jesus. 
And once they hung out with him, they were like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give all my stuff. Jesus didn't come with conditions. He, he, he was around anybody. No one had to necessarily clean their act up to be around. Let's be like Jesus in that way. So we're going to close in prayer right now. I want you to just bow your heads and just reflect on what God might want you to take away today. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for liberation. We thank you that the two go hand in hand, that you have called us to freedom. And we want to live a life of freedom, and we want to give a life of freedom to people who you have put into our lives. So, God, we thank you that you will use us, God, to let people be free, to let people be them full selves without trying to control or colonize them in any way, because that's your will and that's your purpose for us to be set free, for us to live in the freedom that you died for. We thank you, we love you, and we thank you because we heard this, that we will be better followers of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today.